know if pumpkin fest should continue or not, but this is the stigma that's now on our city, and there's a lot of us versus them. And there's a lot of language that was in the paper that was disenfranchising, saying, don't you come here for pumpkin fest if you're out of state. And I think we need to bring more of these students into the conversation on how to problem solve. 15 instead of disenfranchising them with tough language and crazy city ordinances for permits before parties. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Kathleen Doyle, please work your way from the microphone. And now, Susan. Thank you. Um, I live on 45 Kelleher Street. I just half a mile away from here. Um, King stayed in the community. I think we've had a wonderful relationship. I've been here for about 40 years, so I'm still new. But um, I've had really good experiences with King State students. I've worked in nonprofits since I came here, and had many students do very worthwhile things, projects for us that we couldn't have afforded to do otherwise, and very high quality. But some of the issues, um, I think the goals for the Pumpkin Festival just kind of went away um, off on the wrong track when we started competing with other places, having more pumpkins. I think the emphasis, sh emphasis should have been on uh, the type of experience it was, the kind of more oriented toward what people were looking for in the community other than just a race to beat somebody else in another larger community. And I think it detracted from the family and community emphasis. I think uh, if it is retained, which I don't think it should be. We should change the date, the time, and the day of the festival to break the mold and change it a little bit. And uh, we should not offer, allow, or finance another drunken party someplace else in the area. That kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. But I think it's time for us to do something else. We had um, a um, alcoholic-free New Year's Eve celebration called First Night Years Ago. That was very successful. The community really bought into that. It was family-focused. He really has a good imagination. We work very well together here. And I think it's time to come up with something else that really grabs the attention of the people. It's hard to keep the same thing going for more than three years. People have a short attention span as now in our culture with everything electronic and everything. But I think we have other good things that we could do here that would get us out of this uh, mode and get us into something more positive. And I think we can do it if we just we have a good meeting here. We can put our heads together and come up with something else. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, Gwen Mitchell, please work your way on my microphone. And Tim, I think I reversed your order. My name's Tim Zen. I uh, live on Grove Street for 24 years now. There's one word that kind of keeps popping up with me, and it's accountability. Um, we got a meeting with the Southeast Key Neighborhood Group. Thank you, Dave, for organizing that many years ago. Uh, President Hewitt attended, and um, I think she wants to lay, raise the bar with accountability. I understand you might have inherited, <laughs> you know, certain things. Um, but from my perspective, it's been a steady escalation of insanity. Chris. <laughs> I put up with a summer of craziness on my street for reconstruction and it looked beautiful and it wasn't a week when the college kids came back, students, excuse me, college kids or young adults. Um, and I literally went out and filled two five gallon pails in two days of broken glass just smashed all over my brand new street. And that's just one of a hundred different things over the 24 years. So it's not pumpkin fest, it's an escalation of a lack of accountability up to this point and it came to a head at Pumpkin Fest. Um, as far as Pumpkin Fest itself, I would really hate to see it go. I remember carving pumpkins with my two little girls. They were still toddlers. I think we had three or 600 pumpkins that year. <laughs> but it was exciting, you know. And I would hate to see a family lose out on that experience. And, and the many, my girls still, still love it. My daughter comes home from college from Chicago, and it's still exciting for her. She came home this year for it. Um, so I would hate to see that go out this way. Um, so accountability, we all have a, a, a part of that. President Hewitt explained, you know, the city, the residents, the students, everybody has to raise the bar. Um, and my challenge to Keene State is, if we're fortunate enough to have a pumpkin fest next year, I want you guys to bring 15,000 pumpkins down. <laughs> no parties, no crap. Just let's do it what it's supposed to be. You know, let's do it right. You know, we can, none of us are quitters. You know, I'm not a quitter. That's, 
City's not a quitter, King State's not a quitter. Let's let's do this right and finish it up on the high mountain. So <laughs> Scott Stone, please work your way forward, and Kathleen. Hi, I'm Kathleen Joyle, um, a resident. I live at 291 Marlboro Street. I have a couple different hats to wear right now. Um, I'm a youth group advisor for the church at the head of the square. Um, I'm also a parent of a college student. He doesn't go here, but he is a student, and being a resident on Marlboro Street. Um, just as a leader of the youth group, we put on a haunted church every pumpkin festival. Um, we put over 2,000 people through the festival, or through the haunted church. Uh, we raised over $10,000, and that money is used to send our high school seniors and uh, kids in high school on mission trips throughout the United States, where they learn a lot of different things. Um, but we also give back to 100 Nights, and we also give back to Let It Shine. So the money that we raise benefits many people. Um, We've also invested thousands of dollars for equipment for the Honda Church. So I think not only we need to keep in mind these nonprofits losing the income coming in, but many of us have thousands of dollars invested in our materials for the pumpkin festival. And if that were to stop, what would we do with a haunted church full of, or what would we do with the equipment that we have? We can't really throw a haunted church just anywhere. Um, you really need a festival to have something like that get pulled through. Um, so I think, somebody did mention, it would be a great idea to have the college go on a fall break. Many schools have fall breaks. Um, even if it's a long weekend, when my son leaves his college, he has to be out by a certain time, and he can't come back until a certain time. So there is some control that you can have with how many students are on campus. I think if you have less kids around and on campus, you'll have less problems. Um, but now, and I also think it's important to note that the riots didn't happen at Pumpkin Festival and the kids were not drinking at Pumpkin Festival. Because if you were there in the footprints of Pumpkin Festival, you didn't know what was going on. At the Haunted Church, we had no idea what was going on. Um, so now, as a parent of a college-age child, I've been sitting here watching these college students that have been here. And unfortunately, you guys are not the ones who caused the problem. The ones that should be listening aren't here. Um, and I just think you should be recognized for coming forth to put the effort um, forward to try and come up with a solution for this. Um, I really think that that's important that we acknowledge these students. Um, and now as a business uh, resident, I just want to say, this is the first year we live on Marlboro Street that we did not have any damage to our house. We didn't listen to any loud kids running by late at night screaming. And I don't know if this was because the police were containing all the kids down here at the college, or if it was because we were lucky. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Ruth Sterling, please work your way up. And now Gwen. Hi, uh, I'm Gwen Mitchell, and I've been the principal of Mulock School. Um, I'm in my 14th year. And for those of you who are not aware, Wheelock is an elementary school, preschool through fifth grade, one of five neighborhood elementary schools in Keene. And because I've been there for 14 years, I think I'm a de facto resident of the east side of Keene, even though I live in Westmoreland. Um, Wheelock School is in line of sight to King State College. I can look out my office window and I'm looking directly at Rhodes Hall. As many of you know, we used to be the lab school for King State and clearly have had a really extensive and very positive relationship with the college uh, for as long as we've both been in business. But I'm here today as an educator and also as a neighbor because I've watched the neighborhood directly around Wheelock School transform dramatically in these last 13 years. It used to be a neighborhood where, as I, if I were to sit in my office or walk out the front door of school, I would see houses all around us that were filled with families. Every one of those houses had families in it. Even apartment houses had multiple families in them. Now, none of the homes in line of sight of school house families. They all have become what are known in the neighborhood as college houses. Now, I don't have a problem with college kids renting off campus. That is not the issue. But watching this transformation happen 
very, very quickly and knowing a little bit about urban planning, um, I can only jump to the conclusion that Kane State College likely admits more students than it has housing for. Why else would there be that transformation? Why else would local businessmen and entrepreneurs be building college housing around the campus that is not run by the college? My constructive criticism, because that's what I'm here for. I worry that the kids living off campus are less a part of the college community than those living on campus. I think it's the responsibility of King State College to pro provide training, instruction, and education in how to successfully live as adults in the community. What are the responsibilities in, of living in our town? We have three kinds of rules in our public schools. All the rules are based on respect, responsibility, and safety. King State could do exactly the same thing. The tenant education program that has been started that I just read about is great. It shouldn't happen once a year. It should happen every year. Orientation is not the only time the college should be teaching social skills and community living to the students. So thank you, and especially thank you to the East Side Property Owners Association who cleaned up the entire grounds of Wheelock School the morning after Pumpkin Fest by 9 o'clock in the morning. I got there. It was done. So thank you. Debbie, Debbie K. No last name. No oh, last that's me. I just need an uh, So Scott Stone. Scott doesn't want to speak now. Oh, okay. Then we'll, we'll look for your written comments. Please. 